In this video, we are going to set up the animation blueprint. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Really helps with the channel and the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started. Open up your content browser, right click an empty space, go to animation and click animation blueprint. Click animation instance in the dialog box and at the bottom click select your skeleton. Let's name this blueprint underscore animation. Open up that blueprint. At the top, you'll see event graph and animation graph. We'll tackle both of these in this video, but first let's start off. Let's, let's start the, uh, let's tackle the event graph first. On the graph, you'll see a node called get pawn owner, right click, copy, and we're going to use this a little later. Drag off from the return value, click it and drag, and type in valid. We're just going to check to make sure this pawn is valid and working. Next up on the left side of the screen, we want to go where it's we want to locate where it says variables, click this plus sign and let's create three variables. The first one is, uh, it's called in air question mark. Second one is called is crouching. And the final one is called speed. For the speed, uh, make sure this is a float for the the other two. Make those make sure those are booleans. Now let's drag. Uh, let's click and drag over these variables to the graph. And we're going to set these variables. Now, for the purpose of this video, just to make things organized, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to select these variables or these nodes right here and collapse them into a macro. Just for organizational purposes, you don't have to do this. I'm doing it just to make it make things uh, neat. So select and right click the node, one of the nodes and click collect and click collapse to macro and we're going to name this macro set variables the macro is basically a it's like it's it's like a function but you can it, you can only use it once let's double click this macro let's connect this um, this variable this is crouching variable to the output I'm going to select these nodes and click Q just to line these up. Now, previously, we let's um, right click, make sure you right click this and copy. Go back to your uh, your set variables macro and right click. Oh, well, let's control V and paste that and paste two of those. Now from this try get pawn owner, we're going to drag off and type in get movement and choose get movement component. From that return, drag off from the return value and type in is falling. So if our character is falling, it's going to um, it's going to update the in air variable. Now for the speed, uh, we're going to set the speed by uh, we're going to do this again with the try get pawn owner. Drag off from that return value. Type in get velocity and select get velocity, and that's going to give us a vector return value vector. And we're going to drag off from there and type in 
vector length and that will give us our speed now finally as you can see we have our is crouching variable uh, but we're going to tackle that in a later video click compile and I believe that's pretty much it for the event graph next we're going to move into the animation graph right click the graph and type in state machine add new state machine and we're going to name this uh, locomotive or, or locomotion we're going to connect this state machine to the result Now double click the state machine on the right side of the screen. Make sure you click the asset browser and we're going to draw. We're going to drag in our animations. First, let's drag in our uh, idle walk run blend space. Then our crouch idle walk blend space. Next, we're going to jump in. Uh, next, we're going to drag in our jumping animations. So first, drag in your uh, jump start. Mine's is called jump enter, but I'm going to rename it jump start. Next, drag in your jump loop. Make sure that's named jump uh, jump loop, and finally jump exit. So rename that jump end now we have our five animations now where it says entry we're going to click and drag off and connect that to the idle walk run blend space double click that animation and where it says speed on the left side of the screen, click and drag speed the speed variable and drop that over the speed. That variable over the speed and that's going to control the speed. Go back and drag an arrow up to the crouch idle walk. And as you can see, next to the arrow, there's an icon. Double click that icon. This is going to control the transition. And we're going to control this transition, the crouching, the transition, the transition into the crouching. We're going to control that using this crouching variable. So if this variable is true, it's going to transition into the crouching animation. Let's click and let's click and drag from the crouch uh, blend space down to the idle blend space, and we're kind of as you can see, there's another icon. We're going to click that on the other side, and we're going to kind of do that again. But we're going to click and drag this is crouching icon. I mean uh, variable. Select get, and we're going to drag off and type in not. So if we're not crouching we're going to transition back into this uh, original uh, idle walk animation. So that's set. Next, uh, we're going to connect the, the crouch and idle walk animations to the jump start. So click and drag off an arrow on both. For this trans, we're going to drive this translation transition using the in air variable. So click and drag this variable over and connect it to the result. Let's go back and do the same for the crouch animation. Click in air and connect those. So at the beginning of the state, 
the animation or the character is going to go into this idle walk run animation if the character is in is in the air which meaning that the character is jumping it's going to transition into the jump start animation next we're going to click and dra drag an arrow to the loop to the jump loop and for this transition uh, this trans this transition icon or the transition rule we're going to drive that we're going to we're going to right click type in ratio scroll up and where it says current time ratio underneath that you'll you'll see time remaining jump enter animation we're going to click time remaining and this is basically going to spit out a percentage or a ratio of the remaining time of the animation. Right click the return value and type in less and connect that to the ending result. Now basically what this is saying is um, if this, if the remaining, if this ratio is less than this value transition into the loop animation or the next animation uh, this value is going to be 0.5 let's hop out of there let's drag another arrow from the jump loop into the jump end and this transition is going to be driven by let's see that is going to be driven by the in air so click and drag in air and click choose uh, get get this value click and drag off and type in not so if this value is false if this is not true it's going to transition into this in jump animation So now um, the character is falling or it's no longer in the air. It hits the ground. This The ending jump animation begins. And we're going to drag, click and drag off another arrow into back into the idle walk run animation. And we're going to drive the transition into back into the, the idle walk run animation. That's, that's going to be driven by another ratio so you're going to right click type in ratio scroll back up where it says current time choose time remaining the second one and just do the same as we did for the jump start animation drag off and click the value click and drag off from the value and type in ratio oh excuse me we already did that type in less and connect that to the result and for this value it's going to be 0.75 now just a quick tip um, if your transitions between if your jump and in if your jump start and your jump in animation if they seem kind of clunky or it's just not looking weird or it's not fluid enough mess with this value change this value um, uh, nine times out of ten if you fix mess with this value right here it's going to uh, fix your the smoothness same thing with the jump start just play around with this value these values are from the original video and so I'm sticking to those and because they they worked so and I believe that's pretty much it. I think everything is set up. We can test uh, this animation graph to see if it's working correctly. We can do this by going to the right side of the screen and where it says animation preview editor. Click that tab. And as you can see, we have our variables. 
First, let's check our in-air animation. So let's uh, set this value to true. And as you can see, as we toggle this variable, the character is jumping and he's entering the loop animation and stopping. Next up is the crouching. And as you can see, he's, enter he's entering and exiting the crouching animation. And finally is the speed. We can add speed. And the character is walking. We can also trigger the crouching. And that's not working, so we can fix that. Let's see. Oh, what I forgot to do is uh, what we need to do is go into go into the crouch, idle walk blend space. Double click that, and let's connect our our speed variable. And after that, we go back. We add some speed. And if we trigger the crouch, or if we set the crouch variable to true, he should be crouch walking. Now that's pretty much it. In this video, we set up the event graph. We set up the event graph and the animation graph. In the event graph, we set up the variables that are going to be controlling our player's speed, uh, jumping, and crouching. And we ended up uh, setting up our animation graph. And we set up a state machine, which allows our character to uh, walk and run, crouch, and jump.